I think we've all been at that place at some point in time in our lives where we have a friend, family member, coworker, where we see the path they're heading down. We see the decisions they're making, the choices that they're making, and, and we know that they're heading down the wrong path. We know they're going to make themselves look stupid. They're going to cause themselves real harm. They're in a lose-lose situation. And no matter how much we might tell them, that, bro, it's the wrong thing to do, oh, and other people join in and tell them, and basically everybody in the freaking world tells them, don't do this shit, they still ultimately do it and keep doing it. And don't get why everybody can't see what they can see, which is apparently delirium, or the right word would be a delusion. And that's really the sense I get with Dixie Carter when it comes to TNA at this point. And I don't know what it is. We need to have a reality intervention with this lady. I'm sorry. I get that it's hard in human nature to admit failure. We try to look for successes sometimes when there are no successes to be found. And the last thing we want to do is ultimately fail. Nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to be a loser. You know, people might prioritize it differently in their life structure. At the end of the day, I don't think anybody necessarily wakes up and decides, hey, I want to suck at life today. Hey, I want to be a fucking bum or a loser. Now, sometimes you look at some people and you see the choices they make and the decisions that they make and the situations they put themselves in, and you wonder, but maybe in their own way, they just don't see what the problem is. But you look at Dixie here, and it's like we need to have a reality intervention with her. I get it, Dixie. You love TNA. You're a mark for professional wrestling. You're a mark for being majority owner of a professional wrestling company that has a national television deal, that has some pay-per-view distribution. You like the fact that you can hang around with sweaty, half-naked men in the locker room area. You like the fact that these wrestlers have to look up to you as a boss and that you control their incomes and so on and so forth. I get that you've owned this company for well over a decade now, and this in a lot of ways has been your plaything. It has been your baby, and you love it. You can't quit it, but deep down, you probably don't want to admit it to yourself, but you know it's there. You don't want any more of it, and you don't want any part of it, and you don't love it anymore. And, and at some point in time, Dixie Carter, enough is enough. This madness has to stop. You have taken TNA over the course of many years, done some good things sometimes that you don't get credit for, but a lot of bad things and made a lot of bad, terrible choices that good business people just wouldn't make. We don't need to get into specifics of because we all know them at nauseum at this point. Can we can we accept that and understand that and that goes up to and including Dixie Carter? That we know the bad business decisions that have been made over the years. So there's no point in beating that particular dead horse. I got so many other horses to beat on this bitch. Just, you have to be realistic here and say over the span of just the past couple of years, TNA has went from two hours of primetime television on Spike TV where they were averaging over a million viewers, sometimes getting 1.1, 1.2, maybe on a good week, 1.3 million viewers, to losing that television deal, to getting on Destination America to where that television deal doesn't even last a year to where you're now basically in your third television deal in two years and you're going down in television deal value and potentially audience. TNA has lost about two thirds of its television viewing audience, two thirds of its fans that would actually give a crap about it over the past two years. This Joker is not just heading downhill. This bitch is plummeting straight down at free fall speed like it's Tower 7 on 9-11. And yet Dixie keeps fighting, and it's like she can't let it go. She's o She don't know she owes money to all these different groups, Aralux and Fight Network and whoever the fuck else. Billy Corgan, I'm sure she owes something to. And now you got Billy Corgan suing her, and it's just a 
fucking joke and a half. I get that Dixie legitimately feels like her heart is in the right place. And in some, some sense, I won't say it's in the wrong place necessarily. It's maybe misguided. But I get that she loves being around professional wrestling. She loves being the owner of a wrestling company. Maybe she doesn't love professional wrestling. Maybe there's some respect for it. There's some admiration for it. Maybe she just likes the thought of being able to hang around the professional wrestlers. I think that's maybe what she loves. And she loves the thought that a woman owns a major wrestling company or a somewhat major wrestling company. And that's probably more where the love is. But I get where Dixie Carter wants to fight for her baby because this is her baby. You know, this is what her parents gave her a bunch of money for from Panda Energy and said, you know, here, this is your plaything. Stay away from our real business where we actually do make money. We can, Sure, we can fuck off a few million. Why not? And we all know they fucked off a few million. Now, sure, some people will sit there and say, it isn't that bad. Yeah, it is that bad. And we all know it. You know, this is one of these things that we've gotten to that point in time or there needs to be a jump-off point. And the point in time has come, Dixie Carter, for you to jump the hell off the tracks. Because I, I can't imagine at this point in time that you believe in any way, shape, or form that you dragging out any type of process through court with Billy Corgan is going to result in anything good. Look at it this way. You've got somebody fucking stupid enough to want to take ownership of this damn company that wants to take control of this company. If Billy Corgan wants to sit there and take this and make this his disastrous baby, Dixie, this is your out. This is your perfect opportunity to get the fuck away from it. Look at how bad you've made it. You're not going to fix it. You're not going to get it any better. And at this point in time, if you've got somebody stupid enough to take this burden and this debt off of your fucking hands, why would you fight it? Why would you battle it? Why would you do anything at all to filibuster it or oppose it? Enough is enough. For the sake of your baby. For the sake of the people that work for your baby. For the sake of the few remaining fans of your baby. Enough is enough. It is time for a change. It is time for you to walk the fuck away. There has to come a point in time where a good business person analyzes all the contingencies, all of the situations, all the variables, and realizes that under the current direction of their own leadership, that they are not the person to run the ship anymore. They are not the person that is equipped to be the captain, to turn shit around. You have to know when to say when and when to get the fuck out of it. Here is the opportunity to get the fuck out of it. If they're willing to give you any money at all to alleviate some or all of that debt burden that you have with TNA, why in the fuck would you not do that? If somebody is willing to take on this headache, this responsibility for this dying ship, why the hell would you want to go down like it's the goddamn Titanic with it? My challenge for Dixie, it's enough, is enough, damn it all. If you truly love professional wrestling, you truly care about the fans, you truly love TNA, you love your baby, you love the people that work for the baby, then you have to understand that it is time for you to say enough is enough and to close the book on that chapter of your life. You've had over a decade to get this right. And guess what? You fucking have it. All you're doing now is delaying the inevitable. And you could get to the point where you delay the inevitable, where you bring the fucking ship down with you. This is a chance for somebody throwing you a life preserver. So that way you could save yourself. Go to a deserted island. I don't give a fuck. I don't think anybody else does. No ill will, but damn it, Dixie. Enough is enough. It is time for you to fucking go. Stop fighting this in court. Stop putting up any type of battle. The quicker and more efficient the transition of power is for TNA, the quicker and more easily and efficiently the company can create a new identity and start off in a new direction, the better off it is for anybody and everybody freaking involved. It's just when you get to egos and you get to pride and you get to a woman's determination to never be wrong about anything. 
you get all types of collateral damage, and you get all types of shit going up in flames. Holy God, no. Dixie, be the grown-up here. Admit you can't do it. Admit that you're wrong. Move the fuck on from TNA, so that way TNA can move the fuck on from you, and it actually has a chance to survive. If anything, this shit now with her fighting Billy Corgan in court is just emblematic of the Dixie Carter regime in TNA. All this other shit that we focus on, instead of focusing on putting out a good, compelling wrestling product, being put out there by good, thought-provoking, interesting, and in-touch wrestling people. Enough is enough, Dixie. Walk the fuck away! Before you take the goddamn TNA ship down with you.